Hey Adventurers, thank you for watching, my name is Trophy System and in today's video I will show you how to beat the three different main bosses in the Sunken Temple of Karn. This dungeon brings along some new mechanics and a couple of secret passages you can open in order to get some new loot. To get this loot you need to collect four different stone tablets. The first stone tablet is found in the very first room you will enter and the second stone tablet is found in the room just in front of the very first boss fight. The first boss fight has a couple of new mechanics you have to tackle in order to beat it. As a tank just grab the boss's aggression and start adding it. The boss is having three different AOE attacks you have to deal with as a tank. The first AOE attack is a cone shaped AOE attack he will cast in front of itself. The AOE attack will do massive damage to the person hit by this attack so try to dodge or stun this attack. The second AOE attack the boss is using is a point blank AOE attack. When you get hit by this attack you will be more vulnerable to physical damage. If you do get hit by this attack a healer can remove the status effect. The last AOE attack this boss uses is a room wide AOE attack that affects everyone. When hit by this AOE attack you will get the status effect doom. This effect has a 10 second timer. In this boss arena you will see three different platforms. One of the platforms will have an orange glow to it. The platform with the orange glow will remove your doom effect. To remove the doom effect stand on the orange glowing platform. The platforms do change over time so try to remove your doom as soon as you can. If you fail to reach the platform within 10 seconds you will die instantaneously. Next to the different AOE attacks pairs of wasps will spawn as well. As a tank try to take their aggression as soon as you can and focus all the party damage on destroying the wasps first. If the group fails to beat the wasps in time, they will deal massive damage to the person targeted by it and can easily result in the death of a party member. Just keep dealing with the different mechanics and the boss will be beaten pretty quickly. After beating the first boss you will enter a room with a moving head. Just like the first boss you will see a platform on the ground. Get the aggression of the moving head and pull it onto the platform. When it is standing on the platform you can kill it. If you kill the head without it being on the platform it will keep coming back to life. After killing the head on the platform the door behind you will open up and two new heads will spawn. Kill the two heads on the two different platforms in this new area. The doors these two will open up will contain the last two stone tablets you will need to unlock the different vaults for new loot. In the second boss fight you will have to be the temple guardian. You will see two different targets you can do damage to. Focus all your damage on the soul stone. When the soul stone isn't broken the guardian won't take a lot of damage. After doing your damage on the soul stone the soul stone will shatter and the guardian will be vulnerable to damage. In the first phase of the fight a tank can easily grab the aggression of the boss and keep the boss in one spot. 
When the soul stone is broken for the first time, a second soul stone will appear over time. With this second soul stone, the tank lost his ability to keep aggression on the boss, and the boss will randomly attack party members. During the whole fight, the Guardian will use a couple of AoE attacks. Try dodging them as best as you can, since all of the AoE attacks will deal massive damage to the person hit by it. Next to the AoE attacks, the boss will do knockback attacks. For this, he will target one of the party members and stun them for a couple of seconds. This will result in some damage to the person hit. As a healer, make sure to get this party member back to full health as soon as you can. Directly after using his knockback attack, the boss will use a jump attack which will result in damage to the whole party. Keep dealing with the different AoE attacks and beating the soul stones and the boss will be defeated pretty easily. A couple of rooms after the second boss you will see a new moving head. In this area the stone tablets you collected can be used to open up 4 different vaults containing loot. To use the tablets walk up to the stone pedestals. On the pedestal you will see an icon corresponding to the stone tablet you are having. When you insert the correct tablet the vault containing the loot will open up. Just before entering the last boss fight you will see a scale of judgement. This will open up the final treasure chamber. To open this chamber you will have to place the flame tablet on the left scale and the fruit tablet on the right side. After placing both tablets you can tip the scales and both the treasure chamber and the final boss fight will open up. In the last boss fight you will see three different platforms again. As a tank just take the boss's aggression and start hitting it. During the fight a couple of different enemies will spawn. Have the DPS grabbing the heads aggression and just like before make sure the heads are defeated on the platforms. Next to the heads, Mithril Verges will appear as well. The Verges will do AoE attacks in a straight line in front of itself. Have the DPS kill them as soon as they can. After defeating the first waves of verges, a new kind of mitral verge will appear in a grey square. In order to kill these verges, you will have to enter this square and beat it. As a tank, this is a pretty easy boss to beat. Just keep an eye out on the creeping darkness attack the boss costs. This creeping darkness attack will do a room wide damage to the whole party so try to stun it when you see it being cast. This will conclude this dungeon guide, I hope you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful please leave a like and subscribe for more Final Fantasy XIV guides. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to put them in the comment section.